Hello everybody, this is Petra Pop for Inspire Life, New Ideas for a New World. Today in Paris, France, with our beautiful William Brown. William Brown is coming and visiting us from Hawaii, from the um, Hawaiian Institute for Unified Physics, where he works with Nassim Haramein together. Um, and he is a biophysicist and a research scientist. Scientist, together with um, thank you, William, for visiting us. Welcome in France. I hope you like it here. Oh, uh, I love it. Um, and thank you uh, uh, for uh, you know uh, having me, uh, hosting me here, and everything. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely love. Uh, France. Uh, uh. <laughs> this is our biggest honor. Thank you for coming. And besides uh, William, we find um, our dear friend Cyril Stefan, who is a specialist in uh, in sacred geometry. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Yes. <laughs> And beside him, Isabel Fouché, who invites all these wonderful people like William, Nassim, and uh, Samos Managit we had, and Michael Tellinger, and many, many others to France to open consciousness and to teach us more and more. So thank you for coming, Isabel. Thank you for hosting us. Thank you. Thank you. And um, William, you are investigating the biophysics of living organisms and specifically how biological systems interfere with a non-local field of the quantum vacuum. Did I say this right? Uh, interface. 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 Uh, which uh, actually, um, it, that is a term uh, that I, I like to use at times because uh, the idea is that you've got, uh, let's say, uh, one system, got another system, and they're coming together. You know, in between is the interface, uh, two faces communicating. Right? Uh, so, uh, I, 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 I oftentimes describe it in that manner uh, where you have a biological system. Um, and for me, it's quite literal. Uh, um, uh, membranes, cellular membranes, uh, uh, macromolecular, molecular, biomolecule membranes, uh, faces, yes. <laughs> uh, interfacial water, liquid crystalline water. Uh, uh, is for me, and uh, so that uh, is interfacing uh, with. Uh, quantum fields. Uh, uh, what, what is a, a quantum field? Let's say um, the electromagnetic field of light. Uh, so, uh, uh, how is uh, light, uh, uh, electromagnetism, uh, playing in, in uh, biological functions? Uh, that is an area that is very unexplored at this time uh, because it kind of requires a bit of a shift mm. in our, our thinking about the biological system to think about light transmission. <laughs> but, so uh, uh, I, I, I use that term Quite a bit, but lately, actually, I've been thinking uh, uh, how, how there there is no interface. Uh, the biological system, the quantum field, uh, uh, the electromagnetic field, space time, are one and the same thing. <laughs> you know, uh, so but uh, yes, so. Uh, mm -hmm. And actually, there's been some very fruitful, you know, uh, uh, ideas to, to come from that, to flower from that. Uh, um, it's been very, uh, very 
elucidating actually um, because in a way that's unified physics uh, that's that's a unified science you know it's not the biological system and uh, the quantum mechanical system uh, it's the bio quantum mechanical system <laughs> it's, it's one thing that's what I love so much about your work, uh, about uh, Nassim Haramein's work, also this unified look at science, uh, uh, energy, quantum physics, and combining everything and uh, saying, okay, what can come out of this if we all work together and put all our... Uh, experiences our knowledge together and then firework. Um, I feel that this work together with him um, must spark out a lot in you as well and in him again mm -hmm. and uh, that you make enormous progress in your research, right? Uh, uh, that, that's very uh, prescient, <laughs> very, very uh, keen uh, uh, what you, you, you're seeing, it's very accurate mm -hmm. um, because uh, the, the dynamic when uh, we do have the pleasure of working together, um, uh, which l l luckily has been quite a bit recently, uh, w with so much stuff going on, it, it, it's sometimes difficult to get together and do fundamental uh, based science. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so many other seeming pragmatic, practical things uh, um, to work on. But, I need just to say, um, uh, the dynamic when that happens uh, is, um, for me, uh, unbelievable. Uh, uh, what what uh, comes through uh, in that experience? Um, I mean, for for uh, the, the science uh, uh, certainly, um, but uh, it can be a visionary uh, experience, uh, and I oftentimes have this with. I call them uh, geniuses. I don't. I'm not shy about saying it at all. Uh, I've had the, the great opportunity to work with a couple of geniuses now. <laughs> uh, um, <clears throat> um, I'm not surprised. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, um, my mentor during uh, the, the uh, my my PhD thesis work, which I, I didn't complete. Um, uh, so that nobody thinks that I'm mm. saying I'm a doctor you know, <laughs> or, or a, P a PhD, you know. Uh, but I did do a couple years of a PhD thesis. Uh, uh, we would have the same, a very similar dynamic, uh, um, mm. and uh, it, it, he he could take me on a, a visual journey. Uh, we go on visual journeys through the molecular structure of the brain and how it connects into the body mm -hmm. and how your uh, body is your brain in that way. And uh, he could help me see that as a reality mm -hmm. and how it works, etc. Uh, so much the same with Nassim, uh, uh, going through going even smaller at the biomolecular level, going down to the proton and exploring uh, that level. Uh, now you, you get to see how um, the universe is connected. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so the inner universe is connected, how the outer universe is connected, and then uh, the link that I like to provide is how that inner universe is connected with the outer universe, uh, and uh, vice versa. So how, how our, our biological system uh, uh, connects with uh, the living universe, the larger living universe. Yeah, to say it in a very simplistic way, as I can only express it, 
your theory, of course, is that we are biological. Uh, biological system, the universe possibly must be one as well. So we can imagine the universe as a fully living system, as the very smallest particular particle, sorry, in us as well, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. That alone is already a groundbreaking uh, vision for most of us. Um, I, I mean, because uh, we're inculcated uh, with this belief, uh, you know, this is um, almost in a doctrine, a worldview perspective uh, that uh, the world around us is uh, non living, inanimate. Uh, uh, so how could you be connected with inanimate, non-living objects? Uh, mm. There's no... Um, Link. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so certainly, uh, you, you're not connected with uh, the universe. I, I mean, uh, the, the vast, tremendous expanses of uh, space, uh, you know, in between stars and uh, even larger expanses of space in between galaxies. Uh, uh, you know, you're just a little insignificant speck yes. <laughs> on the edge of this galaxy. Uh, you know, well... So what do you think about this? <laughs> not exactly. <laughs> you, know, uh, uh, you, you know, that's somewhat of a, a, a erroneous uh, perspective, uh, and uh, you know, I understand mm -hmm. where it comes from. Uh, uh, some of the psychological reasons why it would be promoted, mm -hmm. socio-political reasons, religious. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, so, I mean, I was saying it's it's uh, like a doctrine mm -hmm. almost. So uh, you know, you've already stepped out of just a purely, oh, this is just an unbiased scientific pursuit. No, uh, uh, information and experiments and observations that uh, show the contrary to that paradigm are systematically ignored, uh, um, ostracized, and deleted from the consensus lexicon. Uh, uh, so, that's not unbiased open science. Uh, uh, it's okay if uh, you know you don't feel that uh, the universe as a living system is a viable model, uh, uh, but uh, you certainly don't block that as being a, a legitimate question and a legitimate pursuit of a scientific model. Unless, of course, you have alternative agendas or mm -hmm. uh, you, you're promulgating a, a doctrine. <laughs> so what would you say from your scientific point of view about uh, the human within the system? What is its place now? Uh, so what would you say? so uh, far from being uh, insignificant, accidental... Uh, um, afterthought of the universe of uh, blind mechanical process that, that serendipitously made a human. Mm -hmm. Far from that, uh, uh, the uh, human being, uh, our body, uh, which forms our mind, uh, our biological system, uh, is fully connected uh, uh, into the very fabric of the universe. Um, we are a functional unit of, that makes it a living system. Uh, uh, they imbues, so a living system, now I, I give a definition for this. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and, and, and uh, on, on my website, I provide uh, you know, this in written uh, for 
So the, um, I will put the, your reference. Okay, okay. If anybody wants to go see it, you might want to have a couple of coffees. <laughs> you can stay awake <laughs> uh, to, to get through it. Uh, but it's worthwhile, I'm sure. <laughs> fundamental characteristic of a living system uh, is uh, global uh, coherence, global connectedness uh, uh, of a collection of, of um, uh, units of form a system. Uh, so global coherence uh, that uh, moves in a goal-oriented direction. Uh, uh, that functions with a goal-oriented uh, characteristic manner. Uh, so, uh, which could be evolutionary, this goal? It's or? absolutely evolutionary. Uh, uh, evolution is not a blind, mm. random process. To 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 uh, entertain that idea for me is remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> when you observe bi the, the, the biological organisms around us, uh, I, I mean, certainly the, the, the beauty, symmetry, and et cetera, uh, you, you know, uh, but then considering the, the molecular biology, uh, the, the nano-based replication that's occurring, uh, uh, being directed by the biological system, so uh, rearranging atoms. Mm. Okay, atomic-based engineering. Mm. <laughs> it's so can, complex. Can, 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 can our technology do that? No. Uh, uh, you know, I was just fascinated by uh, observing um, uh, micro-based engineering. Uh, so d doing things that about the, the uh, uh, micrometer scale, so, so about 25 yeah. micrometers. And that was fascinating. And the devices, uh, Isabel and uh, uh, her husband um, work on that, uh, um, on a, a 3D printer. Uh, uh, now, yes. uh, but, uh, I mean, yes, yeah, so, so engineering, at the nanomolecular level, uh, atomic engineering, um, uh, to make, to synthesize uh, the most complex molecules that we're aware of. The, the complexity of, the, of these uh, nanomachines uh, and, and even um, uh, um, Molecules uh, uh, that provide uh, pigmentation, etc. Uh, uh, they're f feats of uh, biochemical engineering uh, performed by uh, you know living organisms. So to say there's no intelligence in that process is remarkable to me. That, that anybody could entertain that. So. so uh, you know, you got uh, an organism, which is generally a, a bound system made of discrete units. Those discrete units are, are interacting uh, in a collective, orchestrated fashion. Uh, I say uh, quantum coherent, uh, but let's just say with coherence. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're across the spatial distance; they're interacting together. Uh, in a goal-oriented manner, uh, which means intelligence. Uh, uh, something doesn't move in a particular direction, generally, uh, without intelligence. Um, so does the human have a special place in this order? Because you emphasize the human. I mean, I have a small dog. I think she's a dolphin with four legs. and. She's uh, special, so would you put her on the same 
level in a way in involvement in evolution in would you would you say yes this is something similar because you talked about empowerment humans and so on so what would you say about this one? Uh, uh, excellent excellent uh, question um, uh, because um, I think there is a, a definite objective, identifiable difference between uh, the role, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, that uh, uh, a human is playing um, in this living universal system, this living cosmos, uh, and, and uh, the dog. Now, um, certainly not uh, differing degrees of importance, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, um, uh, in fact, uh, for, for many of us, we couldn't do what we do uh, without the support of that companion, that, that dog. So that in itself uh, is a pretty uh, a significant role that uh, that being is playing in the system. Uh, now, uh, but w what that being the dog, as well as the human being is doing, uh, uh, is uh, uh, forming a nodal point uh, uh, in this uh, in the this intelligent system, mm -hmm. uh, 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 this information system, uh, um, like nexus point junctures. Uh, I was actually in terms of humanity, I was. The, the term patent by the, the human nexus network. Mm -hmm. The human nexus network of the connected universe. Uh, uh, I, I think that that's what we're moving towards. Uh, but, uh, uh, Could this be described by, excuse me, by the universal human? Uh, uh, um, I'll have to, to see exactly what you mean by uh, what your uh, uh, definition of the universal human? Uh, it is maybe more uh, the, un the human that is perfectly connected to each human uh, and to the surrounding universe as well in a coherent way. Is that the universe universal human you were talking about? Yeah, 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 very much so, yeah, yeah. So, uh, To, you know, to me, uh, we're connected to that universal human because the characteristic of that universal human is connectivity. <laughs> uh, so, so, and, and uh, the goal, if there was one, uh, uh, for the evolution of our system, Right, we, we already said our goal-oriented behavior mm -hmm. is evolution and action. Uh, you know, the goal of uh, our system is to move into that universal human, uh, and you, that's connectivity, connectedness, uh, 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 forming the maximum connectivity, uh, that nodal point for the information the universal information system uh, so that it becomes like a superconductor, information mm -hmm. super highway. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, now, uh, and then the connections there will be with a collective, I would use that highly, uh, probably it sounds like jargon, highly technical to uh, the, the uh, human a nexus network of the biocosmos, the connected biocosmos, um, uh, but of a very, you know, uh, a, a empathic uh, um, existence, a, a very, very empathic uh, uh, um, way to um, uh, be. <laughs> And I, I very much look forward to uh, the time when 
we're reaching those levels of uh, uh, connectivity and empathy uh, as a culture and a society. So, you, you know, there's some there's some useful things from the, the, this uh, this idea, <laughs> in this science, you know. Um, Absolutely, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure it is. Uh -huh. uh, um, it has to do a lot with vital energy, with uh, connectedness, with uh, evolvement in consciousness, with the universe, connecting to the universe, giving our consciousness to it, and it in return to us. So it's a beautiful exchange. And how this is all happening, This is I think it's so beautiful. You and Nasim, you are talking the same words. It's, well, it goes on about wormholes, uh, it goes on about black holes, white holes, etc., etc. Um, William, do you permit if I um, ask my dear friends, would, oh, I'm sorry, would you like to add something to this now? Perfectly said. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because <clears throat> you are um, such an extraordinary uh, super brain. <laughs> I thought I have some support to ask some very specific questions for people that are just burning to ask you their their special questions. So I hand it over if you permit to to our friend Cyril. So Cyril, do you have a question to ask? Yes. Or Isabella? Or before ladies first and second. Thank you. Please go. Thank you. Thank you. Well, actually, uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, well, I wasn't supposed to be part of this, and then uh, I had an urge of being part of it. I felt it uh, strongly, as a strong uh, within intuition. And then uh, tonight, discussing with uh, Isabel, uh, Petra, and yourself, it looked obvious to me that it, it had to be the four of us. <laughs> and because uh, as we are sitting, I can tell that there are different energies and um, I would say um, some kind of balance. Um, two women, two men, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, as bodies. <laughs> and um, I wanted you to share with your point of view in terms of going beyond duality of these uh, male-female energies, the yin-yang, black hole, you know, feeling back information with the, you know, black and white holes. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the question I have, if it makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your perception of the beyond this duality. Mm. That's mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would you like to answer that? Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, a question. How much time do we have? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, 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 well, yes, uh, might need quite a bit of time for me to think about that one. But no, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's a very good question. Right? <laughs> uh, now, um, uh, one of the uh, things about it uh, is that uh, the idea of going uh, beyond uh, duality, now, um, uh, at certain levels, uh, we certainly uh, are seeing a unification uh, which is going beyond this dualistic perspective. Uh, now, um, uh, at the uh, level of consciousness, though, uh, which uh, I guess kind of uh, seems to be very uh, tied up with this idea mm -hmm. of dualism, um, I, I just make the personal perspective that uh, duality is actually absolutely necessary. Uh, but I, I don't know if this is a little bit uh, off of, of what you were specifically asking. I mean, you, you, you're talking about uh, uh, perhaps more physical uh, uh, aspects of the universe, such as uh, uh, you know, the concept of a, a black hole and uh, a white hole. A white hole, 
course, would be a, a son. Uh, uh, and how we tend to think of these as, you know, very two separate Separate. objects and uh, uh, when in fact um, some of the more recent uh, theories in physics um, following uh, uh, in the direction that Nassim has been pointing for a long time now uh, uh, are suggesting that uh, you know, the, the um, uh, black hole and white hole are linked together. Uh, and, you know, this actually describes uh, uh, very important aspects of uh, they seem to be uh, difficult to describe. <laughs> Where well, we are half of the time. <laughs> Singularity point. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 singularity meaning a point of uh, oneness. Uh, uh, now, uh, j- just thought to, to follow up uh, on the idea of uh, consciousness now uh, as um, uh, going beyond duality in that regard. Because uh, th- this is something that, you know, uh, in my work, I've spent some time uh, uh, ruminating on this, this concept uh, um, because uh, I had actually mentioned it uh, in a discussion we were having earlier on uh, the function of memory to consciousness. Uh, where if there's no memory, uh, you don't have awareness. Uh, Now, uh, because each moment is completely new. (laughs) You're experiencing uh, that oneness, uh, that, that eternity. Uh, uh, so in a way, that's that's kind of non-dualistic in and of itself. And in fact, uh, if each moment is the first moment of your experience, <laughs> there's no memory before it, there would be no distinction between uh, yourself and the so the same reality that you're experiencing. You you wouldn't experience it as uh, a separate from you. Because you'd be experiencing it uh, in its true essence, <laughs> its true form. Uh, uh, you'd be experiencing the reality as an extension of you, perhaps, uh, as your consciousness. Uh, now, um, how you get an awareness uh, is with an idea of separation. Uh, uh, and our language uh, seems to play a very big part in that. Uh, so, you know, this very much uh, uh, ties into how our brain uh, introduces in the uh, nature of our experience. And if you look at the brain, kind of dualistic. You have two hemispheres. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? uh, now, uh, uh, but, you, you know, uh, with the memory, uh, I say, um, oh, uh, uh, this, uh, so a microphone, let's say, uh, microphone is separate from me. All of a sudden I'm creating awareness, you know, of what, is being experienced, you know. So, that's duality, uh, uh, which um, produces a a very particular kind of awareness, uh, uh, um, a more human-based awareness Mm -hmm. that we're aware of. So, uh, I know 
that that may not have been uh, exactly where you were going with that question, but uh, since th that's been on my mind a lot in, in the work I've been doing, uh, I really jumped to that very quickly. I think. <laughs> um, uh, well, I, actually, the uh, corpus callosum is the. Uh, the, the Stargate, the, the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the wormhole network <laughs> that, that is uh, connecting the two hemispheres. The separating uh, part is the uh, Falx Cerebri, uh, F-A-L-X, Falx Cerebri, uh, C-E-R-R-E-B-R-I. In case anybody wants to go look that up. Yes. Have a, you know, really exciting. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, well, I actually, uh, that's what I studied during my uh, uh, doctoral thesis. Mm -hmm. It's the Fox River, uh, it separates the left and right hemispheres. Um, An interface. An interface. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and, and actually, uh, as an interface, it plays a huge uh, role uh, uh, be because um, that structure, uh, the Fox Rimbry, uh while seeming to uh, produce that dualism in the left and right hemisphere, which is obviously necessary, obviously functional, so it's, it's uh, certainly very good purpose by doing that. Um, uh, if you follow where it comes from, uh, it goes up and connects into the meninges, the connective tissue surrounding the brain. Uh, not only surrounding the brain, but uh, actually uh, the meninges uh, uh, intercalates uh, a, a, you, you see that uh, oftentimes that uh, uh, the, the sulky and gyri, the, the, the uh, uh, folded pattern uh, of the uh, 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 cortex, cerebral cortex, that's from the meninges, the connective tissue um, going into the uh, uh, brain, and uh, the, the neurons of the um, but uh, this interface uh, actually forms the connective fabric of the body, mm -hmm. much like mm -hmm. uh, an interface would in uh, of any physical system that you're discussing. Uh, um, the biological system being no different from any other physical system, because if you follow the meninges. Uh, it actually, um, so it's all, it cases the brain all throughout it, uh, it extends outside of the cranium and uh, uh, is continuous with the connective tissue of the entire body. Uh, every single organ uh, is surrounded by connective tissue. Your skin is connected <laughs> to uh, uh, the, the arteries of your veins. Uh, so it, it forms a, a, um, a, a body-wide signaling network. So um, in a way it's separating and unifying, is that correct? Uh, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, so, so it, 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 exactly, you know, that's what I said at the, the beginning, is, uh, it depends on how you want to perceive it. So. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's very useful to see it as um, providing the distinction, the duality uh, between this and that. Uh, and then sometimes you can go beyond that <laughs> uh, uh, and see that, oh, this is one whole system, uh, completely connected, intercommunicating, harmony uh, for orchestrated action and a goal-oriented uh, direction. Think about that, though. Um, uh, you know, an estimate that is often used is 100 trillion cells. 100 trillion. 
a very large number. Uh, um, now, uh, all uh, of those cells working together in uh, nearly complete harmony uh, uh, and orchestration in a very specific goal-oriented manner uh, for, I mean, that is you, but for uh, you to do <laughs> what you do. It's, it's uh, very, very remarkable. Uh, um, uh, and, you, you, you know, to, uh, to say that uh, that is all being facilitated and orchestrated by uh, electrochemical signals coming from the brain uh, is, again, remarkable and astonishing to me. Uh, to, to consider that. Um, personally, <laughs> actually I think that a much more uh, sane, uh, reality-based perspective uh, is that there must be um, uh, um, many uh, communication networks within the body, such as the connective tissue network. Uh, and um, you know, the, uh, the uh, orchestration of all those hundred trillion cells uh, is not just electrochemical signals, but perhaps light, uh, sound, uh, uh, water, uh, uh, the coherent behavior of water, which there's not a molecule in our body that is, <laughs> uh, it's very far from water, <laughs> or water, uh, uh, the, the crystalline matrix, the liquid crystalline mm -hmm. matrix of uh, uh, our living water. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, this is uh, quantum coherence uh, within the body. Um, you know, so that there's the, the, the quantum mechanics of the biological system again. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, uh, quantum coherence uh, just means uh, an instantaneous communication. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, it doesn't seem to be restricted by space or time. Mm -hmm. uh, so this introduces in uh, so some interesting concepts. Uh, uh, on how uh, the, these hundred trillion cells uh, with probably an uh, innumerable amount of uh, biochemical reactions uh, all being orchestrated together, uh, how that's been done um, in such a seamless fashion that we don't even have to think about it. <laughs> uh, now, um, well, uh, so the quantum coherence um, seems, so it's, it's there in the body, well, uh, it's irregardless of space, regardless of time, uh, so that means that um, the bi uh, some of the, the biological molecules in my body uh, are not restricted so much to uh, a, a single space-time coordinate. They may extend beyond the space-time coordinate. Obviously they do. Uh, you know, um, uh, reactions can take place uh, faster than the brain can sense it, send and certainly process it. Need almost seemingly instantaneous. In fact, there has been shown instantaneous communication, empiric uh, observation. Uh, so, the body, uh, its interactions extends outside of what you see. Uh, uh, it's field life. Uh, well, so my body is filled like, your body is filled like, 
the interactions can perhaps intercommunicate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that's a crazy idea. <laughs> that, you know, when I'm interacting with you, maybe there's more communication going on than just... Really? <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, uh, so, uh, a field like um, nature to, to uh, let's say, our communication system, uh, but our body, and you know, uh, say, uh, our body is our brain. Uh, you, you, your body uh, uh, and your brain are one thing, so that's your mind. A field like nature to your mind. Uh, your mind isn't strictly to here. As I say, you're not a brain in a tank. <laughs> you know? uh, um, now, that, that space, the spatial coordinates, now there's also temporal coordinates, so uh, something with quantum coherence, uh, or, or, um, the seeming instantaneous interaction, uh, uh, it, it occurs regardless of time. It has no respect for our well-established linear mm -hmm. progression of Causality, <laughs> uh, entanglement experiments uh, have shown that, uh, uh, su suggest that the, the results are occurring uh, from uh, a communication of when the experiment is done. So things that are occurring during the experiment uh, are occurring the way they do because they're being influenced uh, by uh, actions from when the experiment is done. <laughs> uh, and um, actually, some of the best uh, uh, experimental evidence for this seeming um, uh, uh, disrespect of time, <laughs> you, you, you know, you, you, you're not sticking to that linear temporal uh, cause and effect chain. There's some of the best examples that come from uh, the, the uh, body, uh, the, the body and the brain, uh, human-based perceptual uh, experiments, um, which actually very quickly uh, suggest that, um, well, uh, the field-like nature of our mind might extend through time as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I feel that very much so uh, the nature of our mind is an extension through time as well as space. And there's nothing exactly controversial about that because uh, you have memory. Um, you know, so uh, obviously you have some kind of uh, recall of seeming past events, seemingly past events. Uh, now, uh, if I can go on a little bit further uh, with this, this, this line of thought. Uh, now, uh, one of the questions you might ask uh, is, well, how does this... Um, uh, the disregard for spatial and temporal uh, rules, space-time coordinates, how does that come about? Uh, you know, um, uh, our, one of our most cherished uh, and highest regarded scientific theories, the general theory of relativity, uh, uh, says that, you know, there's a maximum speed limit to the transfer of information, uh, the, the speed of flight. So uh, it can occur instantaneously. Uh, you know, that, that would violate our laws, our principles. <laughs> so, so it, you know, it's, it's kind of frustrating to see it when it does. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, well uh, how would that occur? Uh, now, I, I imagine that uh, it would be very perplexing from the, the consensus paradigm where you have uh, 
physical particle, which is separate from everything else, another physical particle, um, they're acting as if they're connected. <laughs> so if they're one thing, how could that happen? <laughs> Maybe they are connected, uh, you know, well, maybe at a more fundamental level, or maybe they are one thing. Maybe everything's one thing. Stepping beyond the dualism. Uh, but, but stepping back into the dualism, right? We've seen that that, that works both ways, both right? Ways. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, maybe they're connected, these two separate things. Uh, uh, um, Okay, how could they be connected, though, is certainly not through electromagnetic radiation, uh, because that doesn't have an instantaneous transfer of uh, information. Information is interaction, uh, evolution of the system. Uh, well, uh, there, there is a way obeying uh, our physical laws, general relativity, there is a way to um, have instantaneous interaction irregardless of space, irregardless of your spatial coordinates, and uh, irregardless of um, uh, time. Uh, there is a way that, that you can interact um, uh, from the future to the past, the so-called future to the past, or uh, uh, any direction you might like. Uh, and the, the way that that's done uh, is by, instead of traveling through space-time in a linear fashion, you can uh, go through a shortcut, um, a, a tunnel. Uh, a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, uh, this connection, let's suppose that it's a, a wormhole. Uh, um, so, uh, this is a, a very interesting idea because uh, this quantum behavior, uh, entanglement, quantum entanglement, uh, is being described by a general rel a principle from general relativity. Uh, uh, wormholes. You know, wor wormholes are a natural consequence of uh, Einstein's physics. Um, they uh, come right out of the equations, uh, mm -hmm. especially when applied um, to the, the smallest scales of space-time. Uh, well, so here, here's a unification. You know, this is unifying uh, general relativity uh, with quantum physics because uh, this quantum entanglement uh, is perhaps, you know, uh, occurring through wormhole connections. Well, now, uh, so there's our unification of uh, general relativity and quantum physics. Well, that entanglement, that quantum coherence, is also occurring in the biological system. Mm. Uh, so now we're going to bring the biological sciences into this. <laughs> we're going to throw it all into the mix. If we have a unified, we're unifying the sciences, maybe. Uh, well, so, um, you know, in that sense, in that regards, you have wormhole connections. Uh, um, uh, you, you, all through your um, biological system. Uh, uh, your body is a, a wormhole information network that extends uh, outside your body and across, so across space and time. Um, it's not so that, uh, you know, that's how you get uh, instantaneous transfer of information um, through the body, well, uh, and across time, so your memories. Um, how do the memories work? Uh, you know, are they stored in the brain? Well, what if 
your brain, the molecules, biomolecules in your brain, are, are making those wormhole connections really strong as you go through time. Uh, so the, what you can do uh, is go to that biomolecule uh, in the brain, go through that tunnel that, yeah, and go and access that space-time coordinate where you were at one point uh, and retrieve the information from there. Obviously, um, you know, as you progress and you're making a lot of connections and some get kind of weak so the memory is quite as clear and fades and uh, etc. Um, but there's the recording of your memories. It's literally being recorded in the fabric of space-time, uh, but you're literally uh, accessing it from that space-time coordinate. Um, uh, th that means a number of things. Um, that uh, image that you see, right, uh, is uh, being generated from that space-time coordinate. Uh, obviously not with 100% accuracy because, just like I said, there's attenuation of the signal. Well, uh, we can see this in action, uh, uh, actually. You can, see it, you can see it, observe it occurring uh, uh, within the brain. Uh, this uh, um, plugging in uh, to the connected network of space-time, you know, that, that's what makes you that nodal point, that information superhighway of the universe. Um, uh, when you look at the molecular level, um, neurons, within neurons, actually then every cell of the body, certainly every nucleated cell of the body, your body is your brain, you know. But let's focus on neurons because we all think that this is where all the actions occur in anyway. So, uh, and if you look within, uh, within neurons, uh, there are very uh, uh, incredible um, molecules, biomolecules, um, that uh, form together into large assemblies, um, macromolecular uh, structures, <laughs> large structures. So, you know, um, molecules, you, you generally think you, you can't see them, you, you, right? You can't observe them directly, air molecules. Well, well these are such large molecular assemblies that uh, you can see them with a microscope, certainly. Uh, 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 and uh, they form pretty good interface, uh, <laughs> a pretty good surface, uh, um, uh, really remarkable structures. Uh, now, um, uh, so these are within uh, your brain cells. Um, well, you can see these uh, molecules um, being very active uh, during um, signaling processes in the brain. Uh, so, you know, the, the electrical signals that are passed along uh, the synapses of, 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 uh, and extensions and filaments of the, the brain cell. Uh, well, but especially in memory formation, uh, you can see um, uh, Fractal protrusions of the brain cell. Uh, now, uh, w w what that means uh, is that uh, you know the brain cell uh, has all these extensions, like a tree, you know, like tree roots, dendrites. Um, we call it a fractal geometry. Uh, well, if you zoom in on any one of those, zoom in really close. Uh, these uh, microtubules, those molecules inside the brain cell, are 
causing other extensions, smaller filaments, so that it, it's fractal. Uh, well, uh, these microtubules, uh, uh, there's been a lot of work over the last um, 30 years showing their quantum coherent nature, uh, uh, quantum entanglement, quantum coherence, which is uh, wormhole connections. Uh, that's what I'm positing, uh, uh, connections through space-time. Uh, so, you look into the brain uh, and, okay, what's occurring in there uh, when a memory is forming? Uh, well, you see a whole bunch of these uh, subcellular uh, um, fractal-like protrusions, uh, which at the molecular level is the polymerization of these quantum entangled uh, uh, biomolecules uh, that are like the perfect structure for recording information. Uh, just perfect. <laughs> uh, uh, so, what they're doing uh, is uh, they're forming little connections, wormhole mm -hmm. connections, through each space-time coordinate as you go along. Uh, so that uh, you need to remember something, uh, they can just go and retrieve that information for you, and it's there. How can you undo this memory you don't want to keep, <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, the, the, there is many, like also cellular memory, uh, and you don't want to keep it forever if you had a trauma or so. So is there a way you would propose? Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, that's... that's very, very weird. Uh, this is a very, very interesting phenomenon because um, when you sleep, all those protrusions, uh, uh, not all of them, but you can see a lot of them, uh, retract and go away. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, when you wake up in the morning, uh, I mean, generally, you, you feel pretty re refreshed. Well, I mean, you're a little groggy, right? When you, you wake up. But, but, I mean, you start your day, and it feels like a new day. Uh, I, I mean, you don't feel it's, like, strapped down and connected with the events of the previous day. In fact, you may have forgotten a lot of things that even occurred. They, they may have had significant emotional impact on you at the time. Uh, you, you trim a lot when, when you sleep. That's, that's one of the reasons that, uh, I mean, sleep is vital. Why do you need to sleep? Uh, uh, so that you can kind of trim out th these uh, connections. So otherwise, you start to feel kind of spread out. Because well, you are. <laughs> you're, you're spread out uh, through space and time. And it's like you need to go and <laughs> Rematerialize. Now, um, uh, uh, the uh, cellular men, uh, uh, they, they can be recorded uh, where, um, I mean, uh, events occur that are so strong that uh, uh, those connections um, uh, don't attenuate. Uh, uh, they're continuously uh, mm -hmm. feeding information across that network. And, and the body does that because uh, that's an important uh, event. Um, it may not be a pleasant one, uh, but uh, in its intelligence, the body intelligence, uh, it knows there's something there that we need to learn. We need to, to see what it is and know about. Um, and, you, you know, if the body has an intelligence, you have an intelligence uh, that extends beyond uh, uh, what we call the conscious mind, but which should be called the unconscious mind. <laughs> uh, because what we call the unconscious mind seems to be aware of a lot more than, <laughs> you know, so 
got that one a little backwards, but uh, uh, which you, you know Nassim points out very very wisely. Uh, could that un- so-called unconscious mind could be the link to the universal dimension? Because we are made of wormholes, we are made of black holes, and apparently all the universe is made of the same ingredients. So how would you place the consciousness in the universe and in the multiverses? Uh, uh, so, uh, um, uh, uh, there's a word that I love for this, uh, 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 manifold harmonics. Uh, it, it probably doesn't mean much <laughs> to, to, to a lot of people, but uh, it's another one of those really aesthetically pleasing senses, much like the, the human nexus network. Uh, but but uh, 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 manifold harmonics. Uh, but uh, so what what I'm using with that terminology uh, is you can almost uh, just just as an uh, analogy though, just as um, a construct, you can imagine uh, nested spheres uh, um, and uh, maybe not so much as an analogy, each one is um, the uh, area of, the volume of awareness uh, uh, so that you know, this time we're at one of the inner <laughs> Spheres, one of the smaller spheres nested within uh, the larger ones. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, unconscious, which actually just means uh, we're not yet uh, aware of, you know, uh, um, uh, is, uh, as you asked, uh, infinite size. It, it extends to a universal level. Uh, because th- there's no point at which the universe is, the universe changes how it's made, changes how it, it functions. Uh, it's just fractal. It is just fractal. It's through the fractality that the communication goes. So could we, by extension, uh, imagine that we could uh, travel in space through that canal, through that link? Uh, um, uh, uh, because uh, you, you know, so that that means that you're literally connected to very distant regions. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, now you are made of. Uh, wormholes. You're kind of like a, a vortex, a wormhole yourself. You know, actually, if you look at the basic layout of the body, it is. It's two. Uh, yeah. Certainly during embryogenesis, um, uh, it folds over and forms a tube. <laughs> so you're kind of like a, a wormhole yourself, you know. Uh, with a little singularity at the same, it's uh, beating. Well, in the embryo, uh, in us, it's kind of a, a bigger singularity point. Right? Uh, <laughs> now, um, that point of oneness, right? uh, uh, which I'm sure every wormhole has, where you step out of the duality and there's no wormholes or anything, there's, there's one oneness, you, you know. Um, but, uh, you don't travel anywhere when you're at the singularity point of oneness. Uh, so, so yeah, yeah. But so for our experience, you step out of that oneness and look at the wormhole network, <laughs> the, the, the the connected system, information system of the universe. Well, so um, if you are. Uh, a wormhole network, and in this sense, you know, you're talking about extremely far distances out to the stars. Well, you are a gate to the stars, a stargate. Uh, 
so, so uh, uh, I think this is what you were asking. That yeah, it was what I. So can we say you know there were the great singer like Elena Blavatsky that was saying that we will become religious, religious in the sense that we gather all the energies when science will unified with uh, spiritualities or let's say consciousness maybe uh, are we are we there now um, we're seeing uh, the the dawn on the horizon <laughs> wow that's a good sign yeah yeah you know uh, it, it still seems a little bit dark right now Especially for the people who are looking at, at the wrong horizon. <laughs> you, you know, look, look at the one that's coming up. Uh, or, or wait. Is uh, there a wrong or a right horizon? Uh, 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 I doubt uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's certainly not a wrong or a right one, but. Uh, Could it be the expression of the double tourist that the same express? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The yin and the yang, but. Um, all I know is that uh, I prefer to be looking at the, the horizon uh, with the light coming up. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, it's beautiful in the, uh, the other horizon as well. Uh, 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 but, um, you, you know, uh, it, it's um, inevitable. Uh, if our science is going to advance, um, it has to go into the correct, accurate description. Uh, 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 otherwise, it's, it's in the wall. Uh, now, you can do that for a while, but um, I have faith. <laughs> Uh, a sincere hope that humanity as a whole is smarter than that. Mm -hmm. Just sitting there bumping up against a wall, like, like saying, like, you know, uh, oh, how are these two things acting like they're connected? Things aren't connected. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, is it our next challenge for us human, as humankind? Uh, um, mm, mm. Well, you, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. Um, it's certainly challenging. Certainly challenging for uh, some. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but for me, that's kind of the um, the bow wave. Uh, so for for many, uh, once that bow wave is formed, uh, it's easy going. <laughs> You, you just follow the momentum that uh, you don't have to uh, uh, break the uh, uh, surface tension yourself. Uh, um, but uh, uh, th that's w one way to look at it. I, I mean, uh, we're all playing the role we're meant to play. I mean, no nobody uh, has it easy. You know? uh, but in this sense, in this regards, in, in terms of... Uh, uh, our worldview perspective, uh, you know, is our, our worldview perspective uh, uh, going to be c uh, continue uh, uh, with this this disconnected uh, uh, me mentality against you uh, uh, perspective, uh, which our science, our current popular scientific paradigm fully supports you know, survival of the fittest, uh, you know, et cetera. Um, uh, or, you, you know, um, are we going to step into uh, an actually more realistic worldview perspective where you see uh, uh, um, coordination uh, uh, and symbiosis mm -hmm. uh, everywhere around you. That's the natural order. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and you, you know, um, people who want to continue to prom promulgate 
this particular perspective, which is their prerogative, uh, will say, oh, harmony in nature. Uh, don't you see what the shark, uh, uh, the, 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 or the, the lion did to that gazelle? How harmonious is that? Well, um, actually, <laughs> you, you know, uh, lions only tend to get uh, um, sick, old, or weak. Uh, uh, gazelles and it's um, uh, one out of hundreds and um, y you know it's uh, not that huge of a disservice uh, to that population um, uh, you know so uh, is that disharmony it certainly looks violent uh, but it's not disharmony I mean it's uh, um, it's part of the, the, the system you know, so... Uh, Did you say that it's part of the coherency of the universe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, you know... Uh, Could it be also a relief for all the people who play the game guilty, reward, guilt, reward, to realize that everything is just harmony? And so it's, you know, a release of a lot of things we have as humankind on our shoulders. Could it be that? Because, uh, you know, um, it's not that things happen randomly. It's not that they happen by accident. They happen by mistake. Uh, uh, not in a system that has uh, as, as its basis an intelligence. Uh, now, I'm not, don't anthropomorphize that, you know, uh, um, you know, I'm using intelligence. I use intelligence in a very technical manner. Uh, uh, to me, uh, I should probably provide a definition of that to make it clear. You know, intelligence in this context, uh, without the connotations that we might place on it, you, you know, is information exchange that leads to goal-oriented behavior. Uh, you can see particles do that. It's an, and it looks like an intelligent system, uh, uh, you know, because there's an intelligence there. Well, so, uh, you know, in a universe that, that uh, has at its basis an uh, intelligent information network, things don't happen by accident, or randomly, or by mistake. It can appear that way. Uh, so, uh, you know, when you do something uh, that you feel uh, might be a mistake or that was right or that was wrong, uh, not really. <laughs> it is just what it is. Uh, uh, well, uh, s certainly, but um, also that that's an experience that for one, you're feeding into the universe, uh, which, um, to, to, to bring that into more understandable or practical terms, you're feeding it into the collective human consciousness. <laughs> you know, maybe even your, uh, um, well, I, I think certainly so, your uh, uh, pro progeny, your, your, you know, line of... Uh, 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 um, offspring, you know, um, so so because that's being recorded, you know, it's accessible. So you know, uh, um, uh, was that a mistake? It's a good learning experience, you know. Well, and uh, you can take it that way as well, you know. Uh, um, it's working that way whether you like it or not, at the fundamental mechanistic level be in tune with the natural order, the harmony uh, of the system. Let it be a learning experience for you, you know? And so then, yeah, it's like, uh, it wasn't good or bad. It was probably unpreferable. <laughs> and that's the point, right? Like, oh, I didn't really prefer that experience. Um, I'll learn from it so that that doesn't happen again. No guilt, no judgment. Uh, wasn't good or bad. And then, you know, if I see somebody else doing something similar, it's like, 
um, yeah, they're not good or bad, uh, they're learning, <laughs> like I am, you know. That's what we are uh, all doing, even uh, the universe is learning, yeah, that's a feedback from a I think we have to close on. But I thank you very much for this comparison also about n nature because um, I think it's very important that we go from the point of saying it's competing always, the fittest will survive. We can look at nature this way. But I find it's more like a com contributing system. So even if a tree doesn't reach the highest heights, it will contribute that the, in its littleness that the humanity will stay on the ground. Da, 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 da. So everybody contributes their role in their very fine specificity. And so I, I completely agree. We all have an experience and there's no guilt or whatever to have. We just contribute in one way or another. And it's always good and when an antelope is being killed. Of course, she will fight for a while, but then with grace, she's, she seems almost in the last second to understand, if you observe really, she, um, okay, now I contribute to the lion's life, and my life is gone, and I will continue. Otherwise, who knows? But it's always this wiseness behind wisdom. New word, wiseness. <laughs> That, that sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to add something to all which has been given and done or my beautiful colleagues here that have helped me to do this brain session, heart session, body session? Uh, all all, all one, right? All one, <laughs> unified. Uh, 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 it's it's a pretty always a pretty remarkable experience when it's all, on all those levels mm. being one thing. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, uh, I think that you know, uh, for me, uh, if I could, you know, finish w with a feeling and uh, actually where I've been lately. Uh, um, with you know my mind and heart uh, is okay. We we have this um, understanding, uh, you know, a connected universe, and uh, you know the the feelings that we have of uh, intercommunication with uh, uh, others beyond what we classically think. Oh, that's certainly real. You know, it can be described scientifically. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so you know we're getting there. We're stepping into that because uh, um, the awareness helps. That because uh, you, you're not thinking, "Wow, that's weird." Uh, I was just thinking about what my friend said. <laughs> <laughs> it's not weird. You 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 you're quantumly entangled, quantum coherently entangled. So your your brains are producing the same thoughts at the same time. You know. <laughs> Uh, uh, in your exchange in the same kind of energies. Well, so, w w w a, a lot of us, w we didn't know that. We uh, uh, Certainly, everybody understanding, uh, watching this, I'm probably like, yeah, it's common knowledge to me, you know, common sense, and it's great to see that there's a, a mechanistic, dynamic, scientific explanation mm -hmm. to it. But so, for me, you know, where... Uh, uh, I've really been going with it is uh, how it can be applied uh, uh, to uh, humanity at the collective level, uh, uh, you know, the um, uh, organization and structure of our uh, society, uh, you know, um, uh, how we might do things at a collective level you know, in more um, coherent, orchestrated, empathic uh, manners, more intelligent ways of doing things. That's that's intelligence. It's higher intelligence. Uh, uh, so, you, you know, kind of um, uh, moving our, uh, our collective systems 
uh, into greater levels of intelligence and coherence. Uh, you know, uh, so mm. uh, that that's really uh, where um, I'd like to go uh, with with some of this, you, you know, understanding the knowledge and uh, uh, it's certainly one area where I think that it's very practical, very pragmatic uh, uh, as a, um, a shift in our worldview perspective uh, so that uh, we step from a value system disorder into a value system order, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, coherency. Uh, so for getting into another very long discussion on that, you know, uh, that's... Why not another time? Oh, absolutely. I think we all can say we would be so grateful to get an update very soon again about new fruits of your experiences, what you uh, find, what your researchers are doing, and I find it, what is so beautiful, it's unifying and practical pragmatic, practical, and um, I thank you so much. You had so many conferences, uh, radio talks, and so on, to sp spend this time here in this very intimate circle together with ASEAN friends. Thank you so much. We send lots of love and inspiration to Hawaii. Thank you for your work. And uh, I hope this all uh, inspired you. Uh, if you ever think that you can treat wormholes with antibiotics, it won't work, right? <laughs> it's not a good idea, but maybe re-listen again to what we have been saying. And thank you for bearing with us. It was a long session, but it was so inspiring for, for us. And I hope for you as well, and have a good night, and hope to see you soon in one of the interviews of Inspire Lives. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.